Hi, I'm Chris with Doom Squad Airsoft. Today I want to show you Doom devices. This is the device 2 button. It fits in a box, battery powered, it's got an LED strip on the top, two arcade buttons, an antenna, and the whole thing pops out of this little enclosure. Yellow means it's connecting to the game server. Well, what's it for? You put this on the field, the players need to get up to this box and press the button that belongs to their team. It takes the red player 45 seconds. There we go. The red player has captured this point. An app that's meant for the uh, field administrator. See the raw data from that device. The administrator could make two different games or however many they want. At the top we can see the status. It's stopped. Time on the clock is 30 minutes. Uh, device list. It's the devices that are associated with this game. The heartbeat indicator lets the administrator know that the device is powered on. Signal strength. This antenna is connected to an XB radio because Wi-Fi doesn't go that far. Blue remotely changes the capture status of the two button device. Green button takes you to the map. Green just zooms in on the device we were on. And then at the bottom we've got a game log. This is everything that's happened in the game. Press the button, player released a button. The post game report is meant to be shared with the players. Social media coming to a airsoft field near you. Cancelled. Well, I learned a lot of things from that. It failed. It, it eventually failed because I ran out of resources. So what did I learn? Development is expensive. I was doing custom PCB fabrication, custom laser cut enclosures, custom wire harnesses. It was a lot of work for one person. And I was building this software stack as well. <laughs> there was just too many moving parts in this system. I didn't have the support I needed. I, I ran out of money and had to focus on other things. Uh, I can't work for free, definitely. I thought that my friendship with this person I was collaborating with would be enough. Uh, I'm going to do this because I'm a good friend. I'm going to make him proud. No, <laughs> I wasn't getting what I needed, which was money. And, you know, I probably could have used some project guidance as well. I think I was complicating several things. I was developing custom hardware when an off-the-shelf device probably could have fulfilled the task. That's like my, my worst habit in software development and any type of development, really, is just overcomplicating things. And I think, oh, that would be so cool if I use this cutting this bleeding edge technology stack so i'm gonna i'm gonna grab that because i want because i want to try it out well the steps involved to make that actually work are just tenfold to what something that's established and proven would take finally the third thing i learned what did i learn oh yes motivation is required and there's three steps to motivation i heard this in a ted talk it's can you do it will it work is it worth it can i do it yes of course i could do it Will it work? Uh, not really sure because <laughs> I, I built in a lot of inefficiencies. I, I'm not sure if it would work, so I'm going to say no. Will it work? No. <laughs> Is it worth it? Again, no, because the friend I was collaborating with, we stopped being close friends, and it was just me being lonely in my studio working on this project tirelessly without the funds I needed. So no, I only had one of three check marks on the motivation checklist. I think the three main mistakes I made from this were, one, I took on too much. This was a giant project. I took on too much and maybe was trying to tackle the entire thing at once instead of each individual part in series. My second mistake was I worked for free. And this might be okay for like hobbyist projects, but I was thinking commercial at this point. And I, I already had a customer, an airsoft field owner who was ready to buy. My third mistake was not asking for help when I got stuck. This was ultimately why I cut the project off was because I was stuck. I needed funds and I didn't ask for them. I think this is just part of my personality or maybe my training, my upbringing, or family, where I feel subservient, like it's my job to do what other people want. And that's not always helpful in business. I mean, yes, customers are important and service providers provide a service to those customers, but it's gotta be a mutual thing. And I never set up that mutual relationship. The project failed because I gave up. I didn't ask for help. I put up my defenses and I, I fell back to my bad habit of thinking, oh, I gotta do this all myself. I think it's an egocentric approach where I'm the strong man, so I gotta do everything myself. I'm not gonna show weakness by asking for help. And that's a, that's a, a myth, I think. I think the 
the six the people who succeed are asking for help and they are working with groups and uh they're stronger together so yeah that that's about it that's control pointer the my biggest failure i can't go back i can't go back and make it work because who knows there could be something on the market already that does exactly what control pointer was trying to do or maybe there is still a gap in the in the market but then we come back to motivation i'm not even into airsoft anymore so i don't think it would happen now, I think it's just a thing of the past. It's going to be something that I'll remember and something I learned from. And that's kind of one of the, the things about failure is something I heard recently from, oh, who was it? It was one of the guys from Jackass. Uh, he said, if you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough because failure is just a part of the process, like to reach success. So someday I'll succeed with a product and uh, it wasn't Control Pointer, but it'll be something else. And Control Pointer was just one of the the stepping stones in finding success